Hi everyone, how's it going? This is Watch from the MW Technology Channel on YouTube. And in this video, we're doing a direct comparison between the MacBook Pro, the 2013 edition versus the older generation 2012 MacBook Pro. Now the 2013 model of the MacBook Pro is actually a Retina version. So it has a much higher resolution than the MacBook Pro that's on the right, which is a 2012 edition of the base model of the MacBook Pro. So this is the most lowest end MacBook Pro 13 inch compared to the Retina version that they just came out with in 2013. So this comparison is really great for anybody looking to upgrade to this new Retina model if they already have an older generation of MacBook Pro, or if they have this specific generation of MacBook Pro, this is the 2012 edition, or for anybody who's just interested in seeing how the lowest end version of the MacBook Pro compares against this new 2013 Retina model. So the first thing that we're gonna take a look at is the overall dimensions and design of both these two laptops. And in terms of actual dimensions, you'll see that the older generation 2012 MacBook Pro measures about 8.94 inches in terms terms of its depth and about 12.7 inches in terms of its width. Now that is certainly slightly larger than the 2013 Retina model which measures about 12.35 inches in terms of its width and about 8.62 inches in terms of its depth. Now one big difference I do find in terms of the physical dimensions is the overall thickness between these two. The older generation MacBook Pro, the standard non-Retina measured about 0.95 inches in terms of thickness and the new 13 inch measures about 0.75 in terms of thickness that's pretty insane that's almost macbook air level now this new diet of the 2013 macbook pro retina also continues on in the weight category we will see that the older version of the macbook pro measured almost 4.5 pounds and the new one is substantially lighter measuring about 3.75 pounds now in terms of the materials and overall design both computers are pretty much identical they're both unibody aluminum aluminum construction computers and they're both built extremely well. These are some of the best made computers that you can get out there. The MacBook Pros are famous for their build quality and these two are certainly no exception. And both of them actually come with the exact same keyboard that's backlit and also the multi-touch trackpad that has become synonymous with MacBook Pros. Additionally, both of the computers have a front-facing 720p FaceTime camera. The quality is pretty much identical you're not going to find a huge difference between the front facing cameras. However, when we move forward, you'll notice a slight variation in terms of some of the ports that the new 2013 MacBook Pro has. Now we'll start off with the ports that both computers contain. They both have two USB 3.0 headphone jack, a MagSafe 2 power connection, a SD card reader, which is really awesome. Now the non-retina version of the 2012 13 inch MacBook Pro has a couple of ports that actually the 2013 Retina model does not have. Starting with an actual Ethernet port, a Firewire connection, a button to check your battery life status, which is really awesome, a Kensington lock slot for security purposes, and an optical drive for all you people who still use optical drives. Now some of the benefits of the 2013 Retina model in terms of ports include first and foremost an HDMI 1.4 connection that you can hook up to any TV and do up to 4K resolution resolutions at 30 hertz which is absolutely incredible and it also has a dual mic system which should be better in terms of picking up sound as well as the magsafe two power connection, which is uh, supposedly better and a little bit stronger than MagSafe 1. But the biggest thing of all is Thunderbolt 2.0 and it has two Thunderbolt ports and the 2012 version of the non-retina has one Thunderbolt port and their 1.0 Thunderbolt on the 2012, which can transfer data up to 10 gigabits per second versus the 2013 contains Thunderbolt 2, which can do twice as fast up to 20 gigabits per second, which is absolutely insane. So if you're a speed freak, you definitely want to have that connection in there. And that's really awesome that it comes with it. Now, obviously, one of the biggest differences between these two computers involves the screen. Now, even though they're both 13 inches and have a 16 by 10 inch aspect ratio, there's a huge resolution difference. We have the standard model of the MacBook Pro, but you can also get a Retina 2012 version, which they first came out with. But in terms of resolution, our 2012 has a 1280 by 800 
2600 resolution, which is massively lower than the 2560 by 1600 retina resolution that we find on the 2013. Now, a lot of people will say, can you actually notice the difference? Can you see, is there a benefit of paying the extra or whatever to get the retina display? And in my opinion, in a lot of cases, if you're a productivity user, you can use that resolution to its full benefit and get more for your real estate in terms of screen. But it's really designed for really pixel density to make things look clearer and sharper. And it definitely does do that job. Now, it's not really a productivity breaker. You're not going to get so much more done on that 13 inch screen anyway, since it's so small. But in quality of experience is definitely higher on the retina display. So it really depends on you and you have to really check it out in physical form and see it and see if that will make a difference for you. Now, obviously there are some subtle and more important differences between the external properties of both these two laptops, but there are also some major differences internally. So let's get inside the hoods of these two machines and see what comes inside. When we start to look at the CPU, you'll notice that the processor has been updated to the new Haswell chipset, which just came out just a few months ago. It has an i5 processor clocked in about 2.4 gigahertz, and it can go turbo boost up to 2.9 gigahertz, and has three megabytes of level three cache, which is actually fairly similar to the Ivory Bridge model that we had in the previous generation MacBook Pro, which is also an i5, but it's clocked in a little bit higher. Now you'll notice that it's 2.5 gigahertz standard clock speed and it turbos all the way up to 3.1 and it has the same level of L3 cache. Now, if you're taking a look at these two processors on a pure performance standpoint, you'll notice that the new i5 is not that much different from the 2012 i5. And it's really Haswell versus Ivy Ridge in terms of the new Intel design philosophy. Ivy Bridge is definitely just as powerful, but Haswell is slightly more efficient. So that means you'll get some very similar performance with a little bit better battery life. And we'll take a look at the battery life in a little bit, but you're looking at very similar performance in terms of CPU. Now, both of these two notebooks actually comes with four gigs of DDR3 RAM clocked in about 1600 megahertz. Now, the cool thing about Mavericks is that it's really efficient in terms of managing your system resources. So it can allocate more of your physical system memory. So four gigs will be treated like six gigs in the OS. So you really don't need to get anything more unless you're doing some more uh, graphic intensive applications or some video editing or something like that, where you might need a little bit more RAM. Now moving forward, when you get the base model of the MacBook Pro on either 2012 or 2013, you're gonna deal with the integrated graphics. Obviously you can get discrete graphics if you upgrade some of your parts here and there, but obviously that's gonna cost a little bit. But starting out on the 2013 MacBook Pro, Apple has worked with Intel to develop a integrated graphics solution called Intel Iris Graphics graphics, which is very similar to the Intel HD 5000 series graphics, which we saw earlier this year on the MacBook Airs. And with the new Intel Iris integrated graphics, Apple is claiming that you'll get up to 90% better performance on playing different games and uh, overall graphics performance. Now, as we mentioned time and time again, specifications are just specifications. Anybody can throw out numbers out there. Let's go ahead and test out the internal hardware of these two things and put them head to head in some benchmarks. The first thing we're gonna do is good old faithful Geekbench. We're gonna run both of these computers through Geekbench 2 and see what the scores are. And here, as you can see, the 13 inch 2012 version of the MacBook Pro got about 7,424. And our new 2013 Retina model got about 8,204. So quite a big difference between the two. Although let's go ahead and move forward. We're gonna use something that specifically targets it's the GPU and CPU. We're going to specifically use an application called Cinebench, which is going to target our GPU performance and our CPU performance. And we're going to run both things. And to save time, we're just going to speed it up and tally up the results. Now, looking at the OpenGL graphics benchmarks on Cinebench, we're getting about 15.85 frames per second versus 19.88 frames per second on the 2013 MacBook Pro. So the Intel Iris is definitely doing something to get 
get the higher frame rate and uh, definitely good performance. On the CPU side, there's not that much of a difference, surprisingly. This 2012 version of the MacBook Pro, which is the lowest and baseline version of the i5, is getting about 254. And the Haswell CPU that's in our 2013 MacBook Pro scored about 261. So not a big difference in terms of CPU performance in both these two computers. Now, one major difference between the two computers over here in terms of real world performance is the internal storage that's in both of them. The 2013 MacBook Pro actually has an internal SSD, it's flash memory, and the 2012 uses a standard hard disk, which is rated for 500 gigabytes, and the 2013 only has about 128 gigabytes. But the speed that you get on the 2013 is absolutely insane. We'll illustrate that by just doing a simple boot up test and you'll notice how fast everything is in terms of loading up the whole entire OS from scratch on the 2013. And by the time the 2012 has booted up with its standard hard drive, the SSD internal flash memory on the 2013 Retina has pretty much done everything in the fraction amount of time the 2012 has. And by the time it opens up fully, you could be surfing the web, getting your work done. So in terms of speed and overall reliability, we all know that the flash memory is far superior. Now, just to hammer this difference even further, we're going to take a look at the benchmarking software by Blackmagic Design and take a look at the read and write performances on both these two computers and it, you'll notice a massive difference again. The 2012 version, I mean this, this benchmark fluctuates here and there but on uh, kind of a baseline basis you're getting about 92.4 megabits write and about 107 megabits in terms of read. Now the internal flash memory on the 2013 Retina model completely destroys those numbers getting about 300 and 8.9 megabits on its write and about 714.2 megabits in its read. Now, of course, it's a possibility to upgrade the hard drive that's in the 2012 version of the MacBook Pro to an SSD, a really fast one, but most likely you're going to have a hard time getting the read and write speeds of the internal flash memory that's on the 2013 version of the MacBook Pro, mostly because they've actually soldered on flash memory directly onto the logic board to pretty much optimize the hardware to its complete maximum limits. So very difficult to get this kind of performance unless you're getting the model that has the internal flash memory. Now the last benchmark that we're going to do is a gaming benchmark. We're going to specifically look at the Heaven benchmark, which is a pretty GPU and a little bit CPU intensive application. It's a really a hardcore gaming benchmarking tool that a lot of people use to test out high-end graphics cards. Obviously, we're not using discrete high-end graphics cards. We're using the internal graphics card. So we're not going to get too great of a performance, but it's going to really test out the limits of these two computers. Now, importantly, both benchmarks are set to 1280 by 800 resolution so we have the exact same resolution and the exact same details and parameters of the benchmarks running on both computers so we have a good baseline and you'll notice that we're getting a pretty big difference in terms of overall frame rates uh, they jump anywhere at the lowest level on the 2012 from 11 to 18 fps and on the 2013 version which has the intel iris integrated graphics cards it jumps around between 15 and 25 frames per second on average. So the uh, big thing over here is that there are some small differences in terms of FPS, but obviously none of these laptops are geared for any kind of serious gaming. You'll have no problem in terms of casual stuff, but playing anything that's really graphic intensive, you probably want to either lower down the resolution or upgrade to a discrete graphics card. Okay, so the last things to cover on my list is Wi-Fi and battery. Starting with the Wi-Fi, the big addition is now we have AC capabilities on the new 2013 MacBook Pro, which is pretty huge and a, and a definitely a huge stepping stone because now we have the new Airport Express. We have all these new standards for Wi-Fi AC, which is definitely going to be higher bandwidth internet, a lot faster connections and a lot better download and upload speeds as well. Obviously, they're both dual band and they both come with Bluetooth 4.0. 
but if you have a new AC router, uh, it really makes sense to get the new 2013 model. Now in terms of battery life, you'll also notice that the new Retina Display 2013 edition of the MacBook Pro is getting about nine hours of a web browsing and also video playback on iTunes. Now originally when the 2012 version of the MacBook Pro came out, it was rated for about seven hours of web browsing, but the cool thing about the new Mavericks again, as we mentioned with the RAM, is that it actually is really good in terms of managing your resources so it'll utilize less your system memory and be overall efficient with all your system resources so you can potentially get up to an hour more of battery life on web browsing. So even though it's rated for seven hours, you could get eight hours on the older version of the MacBook Pro, which is really awesome, making the difference of the two not that great. But so far, based on some of my personal tests, I am not really getting any more battery life that I'm really expecting from my version of the MacBook Pro, which is the 2012 version. So expect to see probably around seven hours and at best maybe another half an hour, but you're pretty much guaranteed nine hours on the new 2013 edition. But other than that, guys, I think that's really it. We've covered a lot of different things. If you have any questions about anything I talked about in this video, please make sure to leave that on a comment down below. Also, to make sure to like the video if you liked it as well, that'd be awesome. And one other thing, if you're interested in this new MacBook Pro, this 2013 edition, and you're interested in how it compares against the 2013 edition of the MacBook Air, which actually uses a very similar internal specifications you definitely want to check out my comparison of that and that will be at the end of this video also check out the unboxing of this 2013 macbook right now if you haven't already but on that guys thank you so much for watching and we'll see you later